Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is insurance carrier strategy differences. And so what I have listed here are the five major publicly traded health insurance carriers in America and we're going to go through each of their distinct strategies as they relate to healthcare cost containment and increasing healthcare quality. Really the major conundrum for healthcare in America, basically how are these companies going to solve healthcare in America if it's so broken? Okay, so for United Health Group, they're really betting on services and providers through Optum. So Optum makes up about half of United Health Group's total revenue now. I made a previous video about this. So United Health Insurance, the actual insurance side of the business is only half, but Optum providing services not only to uh, employ, not only to employers, but also to hospitals themselves, sort of being the, the middleman for all healthcare transactions and also employing 30,000 physicians. So United is making a big bet that by integrating themselves and actually becoming a provider, so in other words, collecting premium delivery and services and providing the care, that's, that's going to help solve this problem. Okay, that is a distinct strategy of services and providing care. Next we have CVS and Aetna. Now they have a specific strategy related to these healthcare hubs where they're going to turn these CVS pharmacies into places where you actually receive care. A lot of primary care services, right? They're going to have 1,500 of these healthcare hubs. They're already open now. They're going to have 1,500 of them by 2021 and they have 10,000 CVS stores nationwide. So I don't think they're, I mean, if it works, they're not going to just stop at 1500 It's a dramatic opportunity. And they have presence as a consumer brand. People know who they are. There is likely a CVS very close by. Shoot, there's CVS like almost across the street from each other. They're all over the place. So they have a distinct strategy of providing care, especially primary care, through these healthcare hubs, in addition to collecting premium from Aetna, et cetera, et cetera. So they're acting not only as the processor of claims and the collector of premium, but also the provision of care. Okay, next strategy, Humana, right? Their huge strategy is the government, right? So they get a ton of their revenue from Medicare Advantage and from the military. They have a huge TRICARE contract to provide health care for the military. So, and Medicare Advantage is their largest growing segment. And in fact, they've actually kind of shrunk in terms of their like fully insured commercial business, okay? So Humana has a distinct strategy, and that is the government. Okay, next up ours is Cigna. Now I've kind of separated out Cigna and Anthem here at the bottom. Okay, so Cigna bought Express Scripts, and then Anthem is actually creating its own PBM as well. And so they're kind of doing this, okay, this PBM integration play, which look, it's like CVS and Aetna, they got a PBM, United Health Group's got a PBM. So, okay, there's that. I mean, there's a lot of risk there in that the entire rebate and spread pricing model for making money in the PBM world is under huge scrutiny right now. So if, they're, if Sigma's placing their bet on this PBM being a big driver of their growth, let's just say it's risky. Okay, next up, with Anthem, same thing. I mean, they had to go out and they had to create their own PBM. And if you look at the annual report, they're really placing a lot on this, like, value-based care and ACOs. And Cigna's doing a lot of that, too. So it's not around the direct provision of care. Okay, so UHG is like, we're going to provide care. CVS is like, we're going to provide care. With uh, Cigna and Anthem, it's more like, okay, well, we're going to provide these incentives and value-based care. Okay, so what's my point? My point is, what... Are any of these strategies going to work? Well, forget about my opinion. Let's just look at the market's opinion, the stock market's opinion. And so what I have here, these circled numbers, are the price-to-earning ratios of these publicly traded companies here in November of 2019. So United Health Group's at 19, CVS Edna's at 21, a little higher, Humana's at 17, a little lower, Cigna and Express Group's also at 17, Anthem also at 17. Okay, so they're pretty similar. If anything, you know, obviously, if you can quote unquote solve healthcare, the over $3 trillion nut to crack in America, you could provide tremendous value and your stock price would be through the roof if you actually had a solution to that. Okay, so maybe the market is giving CVS and Aetna like a little bit of premium on that. And maybe UHG is like in second place, but overall, they're all pretty close. So in other words, the market's saying, meh, like, we'll see, we don't really know. And oh, by the way, the average price to earning ratio for the entire S&P 500 is 23. So they're all below average. So if any of them had a plan that the market actually thought 
would solve healthcare, believe me, their price to earnings ratio would be much higher than this. Now, I just want to say as a disclaimer, look, I own as part of my retirement an S&P 500 index fund, but that's it. I don't own any of these individual stocks. Okay, but I'm not, I'm just I'm not talking about this as a way to make money as investing. I'm talking about as a way of like weighing or measuring whether or not these strategies are good or bad. And my message for today is is that the market's analysis of these strategies is kind of meh. And that's my point for today. And thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.